discussion. Um, and um, I'm going to introduce um, Inga, who is going to tell us a little bit about the Access to Nutrition Index. Inga arguably has the hardest job of all the panellists in that she's trying to set some benchmarks around business activity and really engage businesses in the process of getting a better nutrition offer. Um, she's going to tell us about some of the work that the Independent Access to Nutrition Index has been doing in this space. Um, and I think it will open a discussion about whether we'd like to apply some of this approach more heavily in the UK. So Inga, do come and tell us about it. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Um, I'm really pleased to be here uh, today at the Food Foundation to talk a little bit about the Access to Nutrition uh, Index. Um, the Access to Nutrition Index is all about accountability, uh, which is key if we want to tackle uh, under and, and over nutrition. Um, the Access to Nutrition Index was uh, established in 2013 and we have uh, published the second index uh, last January. Um, so that was the second round where we invited companies um, to deliver data on what they are doing to tackle under and over nutrition. As Anna mentioned, we are an independent an initiative, uh, which is important because as an assessment tool for companies um, and uh, an input provider for all other stakeholders, it's crucial that you can really assess the companies uh, independently. Our focus is really to provide companies with a benchmark um, to compare themselves uh, uh, to their peers. Um, what are they doing uh, well and where should they improve to tackle under and over nutrition? Um, so our tone of voice to the companies is objective, um, independent, but also we really want to inspire them uh, with best practices from other uh, companies so that they can learn and improve their actions uh, on nutrition. At the same time, and I think that's also very important because it's a, a dynamic and interactive field, we provide these data to governments, policy makers, uh, investors, um, academia, um, media, all relevant stakeholders in influencing company behavior. Um, so we really want to give a, a status uh, where companies are, uh, but also uh, inspire others to take action. So for example, uh, to give uh, co uh, governments input on how companies are performing so that they can include that in regulations uh, or other policies. Um, in the end, we are there to stimulate dialogue and action between the companies and the other stakeholders group. And as I mentioned, the two for a accountability. These are the 22 companies that we have uh, assessed uh, in 2016 uh, on the global index. Uh, as you can see, uh, very well-known brands, and many of them are uh, active here in, in the UK uh, a market. I think um, all of them uh, sell products uh, here uh, on the market, and they have a very powerful role. So they have a great influence. Um, what Boyd also uh, mentioned in his introduction, they have a great influence on what we eat the quantity uh, and the quality. So what they uh, uh, can do to tackle uh, malnutrition is really crucial to focus on. A little bit about our methodology. Uh, we have in our index uh, over 200 indicators uh, where we uh, gather data on uh, from the companies, um, all in seven categories. So our uh, categories are nutrition governments and strategies. Uh, so we analyze what are the company policies uh, and uh, management systems to tackle nutrition. Uh, you could say, well, why bother about uh, the policies? Because in the end, it's uh, the actual products or the marketing uh, that counts. We see uh, a huge correlation between companies that have strong uh, policies, uh, how they in the end also act uh, um, in terms of their product development, marketing practices, etc. So it is important um, to uh, assess the policies as well. And we see that the leading companies on our index really have uh, embedded nutrition in the core uh, of their uh, business. Then the second section is really about uh, formulating and delivering appropriate, um, uh, affordable and accessible uh, products. So category B is 
is about a product formulation. Um, uh, it's about uh, decreasing negative ingredients like sugar, salt, fats, trans fats, um, and increasing positive ingredients. It is also uh, whether companies um, uh, monitor um, how their product portfolio looks and uh, to set targets in that area. And then category C is about making those healthier options available to the consumers and especially low income consumers. So that's about pricing uh, and distribution. Then category D is about marketing. Uh, we have uh, a, a criteria focused on consumers in general, but as mentioned also uh, in, in one of the presentations, uh, marketing to children is really uh, crucial in, in tackling childhood obesity and, and, and overweight. So we have a specific um, set of indicators focused on marketing to children. Then category E is about supporting a healthy lifestyle for both uh, the own employees of a, of a company. We believe that the first role that a company should play is to take care of good nutrition practices for its uh, own employees but then also about uh, consumers more broadly. We have included a new criteria this year in this category, which is about supporting breastfeeding at work. Uh, um, Lawrence uh, mentioned uh, the low breastfeeding uh, rates. Um, marketing of the companies is, of course, one element, but it is crucial that there is a supportive uh, climate and environment in terms of maternity leave procedures, but also fac facilities at work once the, um, the breastfeeding mother returns uh, to, the, to the office. Um, so that's a new criteria and um, most of the companies do not score very well uh, on that yet. Um, category F is about labeling. Uh, it's about uh, back of pack labeling, which is mostly better regulated, so there's also a specific focus on uh, consumer-friendly front-of-pack uh, labeling, as well as the use of health and nutrition claims. And then category G is about engagement with um, uh, governments and um, uh, other stakeholders. Uh, it was mentioned, the example, on uh, the, the, uh, the tax on, on, uh, on sugar, uh, uh, sugary beverages, uh, that uh, companies play a role here, so it's crucial that companies are transparent about the positions they take. Uh, it is very hard to measure, of course, uh, what is happening in lobbying behind the scenes, but our indicators focus really that companies make transparent their memberships of industry associations, what positions they take on key nutrition issues, whether they publish those issues, and then um, once that is all transparent and disclosed, it will be easier uh, for uh, other stakeholders to scrutinize the companies if they behave differently uh, in, in the room uh, with uh, governments and other stakeholders. This is the ranking, um, and um, as you can see, um, the uh, number one company uh, this year is Unilever, so based here uh, in, in the UK. Um, they have scored 6.4 out of 10, so um, uh, although, of course, uh, um, they do uh, uh, their practices a lot better than many of the competitors, still 6.4 out of 10 uh, is a long way to go. Um, you see that the leading three companies are similar um, as in 2013, so uh, Unilever, Nestle and Danone are really ahead of um, their competitors in many uh, uh, areas. What is also interesting to see, and there you see the dynamic and, and uh, the impact of an index, um, that uh, two uh, companies, Mars and Frisland Campina, who scored really very low uh, in 2013, have invested um, uh, with our two in uh, first further nutrition strategies and also uh, further disclosure of their policies. Um, and uh, and uh, they um, uh, have now uh, really scored better. So they have increased uh, their uh, disclosure, which is uh, special, especially if you look at the fact that both companies are not publicly listed, so they are not legally obliged to publish a lot, um, but they have really uh, uh, made changes to their uh, practices. And that already happened over the three years um, that we uh, um, have published now the second index. So I think that is a uh, 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 first signal that an index uh, like this can help as an intervention, of course, in combination with many other uh, activities uh, in, in the food environment. Our overall finding um, is really that um, companies 
should step up their efforts um, if, if they want to address the global nutrition uh, crisis. And uh, Lawrence uh, gave a lot of data. Um, it is clear that also companies, in addition to the other stakeholders, should play their role. Um, and investors can also play uh, an important role there. Uh, investors are very influential. They um, invest uh, in the companies. Um, so it's really the interaction between investors, companies, and other stakeholders um, that can help the companies move uh, forward. If you look at the, the average score, it has slightly improved uh, compared to 2013, so from 2.2 to 2.5 now in 2016. If you take into account that the methodology has been sharpened, uh, so there are more indicators that uh, uh, companies um, need to score on, especially in undernutrition, um, we have increased the number of indicators, uh, but also in other areas, for example, uh, when you look at uh, category B, the formulation of products, um, we have uh, uh, asked for sharper and uh, more quantitative targets on reduction of salt, sugar, uh, fats, and uh, increase of positive ingredients so we have been more demanding so taking that into account um, I, I think you can conclude there has been some progress but still uh, 2.5 out of 10 of course uh, is not uh, a score to be uh, uh, proud of um, if you look at what companies then should do and you see that the leading companies uh, like Unilever here in the UK um, are um, doing that more and more is that they have proper systems in place um, to assess their product portfolio um, and to set concrete uh, uh, targets uh, on that. Uh, for example, Unilever, they have a nutrient profiling system uh, which they use globally in all countries for all their products. Um, and they have uh, uh, now set a standard for 2020 that they want to have 60% of their all their products uh, complying uh, with the healthy standards. Um, so that is very concrete and measurable and uh, um, other companies should uh, take over that practice uh, as well. Um, what we also have concluded is that companies should take a global approach and especially um, here the European companies are doing better uh, than uh, US companies. Um, they are more uh, willing to apply their standards where it uh, is about um, labeling uh, or uh, reducing negative ingredients or marketing to kids. Uh, they apply their standards uh, more globally whereas uh, a lot of the US based companies are only applying stricter standards in their home market which of course if you look at uh, inequality of consumer uh, uh, behavior it is not uh, a good practice we've also concluded that marketing of breast milk substitutes is a severe uh, cause of uh, um, concern um, we have done a, s a separate assessment of the six leading baby food producers to assess whether their uh, policies and practices are in line with the international code of marketing of breast milk substitutes um, so we've that made a policy assessment, but we've also done uh, in-country assessments in two countries, Vietnam and Indonesia. And the conclusion is really that companies uh, um, are not applying, uh, complying uh, with the international code. Um, they uh, normally focus only on high-risk countries. Uh, that's a bit different uh, than in other areas of uh, nutrition. Here you see that um, uh, the companies have stricter policies, mostly in developing countries than they have here um, uh, in the UK or in Europe or in the US um, uh, and we believe that also here companies should uh, comply uh, with the code everywhere but also um, the fact that uh, um, companies fall back to local less uh, strict regulation um, compared to their own policies is also a concern and they should also uh, apply uh, policies to all sorts of formula so not only the first six months uh, infant formula but also uh, the other uh, formula. So these are um, our overall findings uh, for the global index. Um, I would like to conclude to say that indeed um, we are also piloting with uh, spotlight country indexes. Um, in 2013 we've done three pilots in Mexico, South Africa and India. We're now working on an uh, index specifically for India where we've tailored the methodology uh, to uh, the, the issues in the country. Uh, so more focus for example on fortification um, and other uh, in undernutrition indicators. Um, but the spotlight indexes really uh, contribute to the dialogue on the ground uh, with the local uh, stakeholders. So that is something that we 
uh, have uh, in, in uh, development as well. And some of the developed markets like UK and US uh, already showed some interest uh, uh, for this um, index model.